ABC's Monday Night Baseball, a special Friday edition. Live from Anaheim Stadium in Anaheim, California. The California Angels hosting the world champion New York Yankees. And this ABC Sports exclusive brought to you by Chevrolet and Chevrolet dealers coast to coast. By Lauren Brow, when you want the taste of a truly great American beer, there's really only one tonight. Let it be Lauren Brow. And by Allstate Insurance Companies, you're in good hands with Allstate. Stadium, home of the California Angels, where the New York Yankees are calling tonight, where attendance is up more than 372,000 this year, the biggest single increase in baseball. The standings in the American League now look like this in the Eastern Division. The Baltimore Orioles are leading by three over the Boston Red Sox. The Milwaukee Brewers are holding at seven games back. The Yankees are in fourth place, nine games off the lead after being banged around again up in the Great Pacific Northwest. In the Western Division of the American League, the California Angels are on top by a game. The Rangers, Texas, they're in Kansas City tonight. Big ball game for the Rangers. The Royals have now fallen to fourth behind the steady Minnesota Twins. And hello again, everybody. I'm Keith Jackson, and I suppose you, like us, got a crick in your neck from looking over your shoulder on a Friday the 13th. The sun has been hidden all day, has just come out. It's very warm and comfortable as we settle in for what should be an exciting game tonight between the California Angels and the New York Yankees. The Angels came into the American League back in 1961, moved down here to Anaheim in 1966, and since coming here, the people of this part of Southern California have been most deliberate in their support. And as this ball club has started to improve and started to win, Gene Autry has been warmed by the support of the people here, and it looks like they're headed for well over two million in 1979. It was always the dream of Gene Autry to win himself a pennant. Yeah, baseball man. Loves the game, always loved it, all those years of riding at horses and shooting at the bad men. And to paraphrase one of his great hit records, he has been a silver-haired sugar daddy since getting into the game of baseball, spending well over $15 million for free agents and trades. We'll detail that for you as we move along tonight, but I'll guarantee you one thing, that the cowboy is happy to have his ball club sitting on top. Right now, let's turn to Howard Cosell and talk about the latest adventures of the New York Yankees because they come out of the Northwest bruised again. Yes, they escaped with their lives, Keith, but just barely. And George Steinbrenner, the Yankee owner, is not silverhead, but he has been a sugar daddy of sorts, too. Two things to remember about this Yankee team. They are realistic. They are poised. They are realistic in the task before them to pass not one but three teams, Milwaukee, Boston, and then the apparently indomitable Birds of Baltimore. And they are poised because they have done it before and they believe they can do it again. Indeed, Billy Martin told the old Dodgers shortstop Harold Pee Wee Reese on the field before the game, Pee Wee, I think we can do it. I know we can do it, but it won't be easy. That's the mood of the Yankee team as they escape from Seattle for the task of facing Nolan Ryan tonight. Now, ordinarily, I'd be turning this microphone and camera over to the twin D, Don Drysdale. But as many of you know, he is the voice of the California Angels. And right now, you see him preparing to do the Angels radio broadcast. Under a fixed policy of ABC Sports, a man identified with one team throughout the season cannot work a network telecast involving that team with which he is so identified. So the Twin D won't be with us tonight. Instead, the man who spent his life as a substitute is with us. My old and dear friend, he's down on the field right now, Mr. Bob Euchre, the catcher who never made it. Bob? And a presentation here tonight for Rod Carew. Last year, as a member of the Minnesota Twins, he won his seventh batting championship, hitting 333. He homered five times and he knocked in 70 runs. Batting chip championship number seven for Rod Carew and here to make the presentation tonight, the president of the American League, Mr. Lee McPhail. Thank you, Bob. It is my privilege 
to represent all 14 of our teams here tonight in honoring Rod. We are presenting him with this silver Louisville Slugger, emblematic of having won the American League Batting Championship in 1978. As Bob says, Rod has won seven of these, a truly remarkable achievement. He is without question the finest player active in baseball today, and more than that, he's a very fine gentleman and a credit to our game. Congratulations, Rod. Thank you very much, Mr. McPhail. And I'd like to thank the Louisville slugger, Hillerick and Bradstreet, to, present, to have been presented me with this award tonight. And I just hope that I can get back within the next week or so and give Roy Smalley and the other guys a run for another batting title in 1979. Thank you. Rod Carew just back yesterday, got the final OK, I guess, from the doctors here in California to start hitting again. How long is it going to be before you're back in the lineup on an everyday basis? Well, Bob, I think, uh, you know, if I can get a couple of days of hitting, you know, maybe four or five days of hitting, uh, hopefully, you know, I should be back in the lineup uh, next week uh, in Baltimore. And I know it's going to be kind of hard, but I'm just going to uh, do my best. You know, uh, I can't hit by sitting on a bench. I can't get myself by back in shape by sitting on a bench. So I'm just going to have to play as much as I can and uh, work myself back into some kind of shape. All right, gentlemen, thank you. Congratulations one more time to Rod Carew. Our starting pitchers tonight, Louis Tiot, 6-3 for New York. Nolan Ryan, 11-6 for California. The Angels and the Yankees coming up on a Friday the 13th. Major League Baseball presents Big League Tips. Well, I think the, the most important thing about hitting is find a bat that you can use, something that you can swing. Line up for the New York Yankees leading off. Bobby Mercer hitting as a Yankee 220 with four ribbies. Thurman Munson at 301, but only three homers and 35 ribbies. Greg Nettles in a slump. 259, 13 homers, 49 ribbies. Reggie Jackson, red hot, 290, 16 home runs, 45 ribbies. Lou Pinella, the steady one, 318, eight home runs, 45 RBIs. Chris Chambliss struggling, 264, nine home runs, only 29 RBIs. The DH, Jim Spencer, 262, eight home runs, 24 RBIs. Willie Randolph getting on base often, 268, three homers, 34 RBIs. Bucky Dent at 250, one homer, 21 RBIs. Keith? The Angels have not taken the field as yet. Might tell you that Jim Fregosi, the manager of the California Angels, uh, is not with the ball club tonight. He's hospitalized for some tests. And Bobby Knopf, who played a lot of second base for this ball club, was a very popular figure and now a coach with the team, will do the managing from the dugout tonight. So Bobby Knopf handling the chore for Jim Fregosi. The crowd is a little late getting here and good reason for it because uh, the five o'clock start it's kind of hard to steal more than an hour and the traffic sometimes on the California freeways can get very gummy this time of the of the uh, day. That's a very <laughs> apt I think uh, comment too because as the shadows creep out across the field uh, that baseball coming from Nolan Ryan at better than 90 miles an hour will be coming out of the sun into the shadow and last Monday he pitched against the Boston Red Sox in a twilight ball game here. He struck out the side in the second and the fourth innings had a total of 12 in the ball game and shut out the Red Sox by a score of six to nothing and uh, Jim Rice and Bob Watson struck out three times each against Nolan Ryan in the twilight. So he is particularly lethal and the Yankees are quite aware of it. Don Drysdale told you a story last Monday night we were talking about in Montreal the Yankees coming in here for this Friday night twilight game and Jim Spencer heard about the game being played at this hour. He was very quick to mention that he was quite sure it would come up Nolan Ryan and that's exactly what has happened. On the it's other side of the coin, Lou Pinella has this to say. When I asked him if uh, the Yankees had a defeatist attitude coming in here at twilight against Ryan, he said no. He's working with three days rest. As you look at Louis Dion, the ancient one, coming in, he's been pitching cannily for the Yankees, comes off a one-hitter, a brilliant effort against Oakland. Pinella said, I think working with three days rest, he will, and after a tough game where he threw a lot of pitches, it will not be nearly so effective as people think. Both field, 
fellow who first came to fame as a member of the Oakland Ball Club, Joe Rudy, who's finally sound and playing well once again, hitting over 300 since returning from the injury list. Rick Miller, who has just come off the injury list, is hitting an even 500. He's been wearing him out since he came back to play, and he's outstanding defensively. Over in right field, Dan Ford, who came from the Minnesota Twins in a trade, and he has been very effective all year as well. Moving to the inside at third base, you have Carney Lansford. This is a young man, and I mean very young, in his early 20s, who came up out of the system and seemingly destined for stardom in the American League. At shortstop tonight, another young man who has come out of the system, as a matter of fact, grew up right here in Southern California, young Jim Anderson, who's been hitting very well. Over at second base, free agency delivered this outstanding player to the California Angel, along with Gene Autry's pocketbook, Bobby Gritch. Bobby is playing with a sore hamstring problem in a leg, but he's in there battling, having a big year. Over at first base, you have Willie Akins, who is also having an outstanding year, and they really needed a big effort from Willie with the injury to Rod Carew. Back of the plate is another young man who has uh, become feared, literally, uh, with men on base. He's become a good, hard, tough clutch hitter, Brian Downing. And Nolan Ryan with his numbers there on the mound. And the stories about this man and his pitching achievements will go on throughout the night. Worth remembering that he defeated the Boston Red Sox 6 0 last Monday night in a twilight game here. We had this mild delay in starting Keith because Nolan was a little late coming in from the clubhouse, or rather coming out from the clubhouse, as Bobby Mercer is the first to go against Nolan. He has had fair success in the past against Nolan. Generally, the Yankees have had little. The first pitch of the ball game is low and outside for ball one. It'll be such a startling contrast between Ryan and Tiant tonight. It'll be fun to watch. That pitch is high. Two balls and no strikes. Larry Sherry, the pitching coach of the Angels, says. Nolan has been throwing well. He's in his rhythm. He's compact, more consistent with his delivery, and his pitches have been in the black part of the plate rather than up and over the plate. And Bobby Mercer hits it high in the air in the sun field. Over in right center goes Danny Ford looking up into that bright sun, and the right fielder for quite some time now is going to be looking Bobby right second. at the sun. One down. Catcher, Thurman. Well, Thompson. I'm proud to announce that we've been joined by Bob Buchan usually gets lost in the tunnel from the dugout runway. I made it. I made it. Welcome back, Robert. Ah, I'm using up one of my options tonight, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Thurman Munson at 301 on the season with three home runs, and Ryan has it on the corner for a strike. I asked Thurman about facing Ryan in the twilight. He said, me against Ryan, it doesn't matter. Five o'clock, eight o'clock, it's the same thing. Breaking pitch is high. And the Texan stretches his shoulder a little bit. He's in an option year and having a good year. He goes outside and it goes to two and one on Thurman. Lives in Alvin, Texas offseason. That's about 30 miles southeast of Houston. There's there you the see. amplification of what Howard was That's saying. Right. There you <laughs> see it. That's a strike. And it's two and two, the Munson. Nolan during the offseason doesn't do anything particular except live and work as a farmer. That keeps him in pretty good shape. Two two to Munson. Fouled away. Interesting to see that graphic just posted, Keith. Despite all of the talk about Nolan's total effectiveness, he's only 8 and 8 against the Yankees, and there's the earned run average, 3.71, not consistent with his general overall earned run average. So he's had trouble with the world champions, although they freely attest to the brilliance of his performance. Munson punches it down the right field line. It's just foul. Just foul. Now keep watching Nolan Ryan pitch here on Monday night when he stopped Boston. He struck out 12 in the early in early innings in that game. The Red Sox did not touch him. Did not touch him at all. And a couple of balls hit here in the first inning by Mercer, and that ball just missing in right field by Munson. 
But Ryan in that game on Monday threw 140 pitches. Kind of hard to figure out how this guy can work with three days rest throwing that many pitches. That's the Pinella theory that I've already discussed while you were wending your way through the tunnel with your absence of vision. <laughs> Vanilla thinks that Ryan will be a tired pitcher tonight and the Yankees will get him. Contact by Munson on that last drive and the one Mercer hit were both on balls up in the strike zone. Whoa, there was a bullet just missed. Count goes full 3 2. The tip off on Nolan Ryan is that in his 12 complete games this year, he's walked three or less batters. He doesn't preload him to first base. He can hang in. Once and again, fouls it away. It was a good pitch on the outside corner. Count holes 3 2. Keith, you can see how defensive hitters are when you look at Munson just trying to punch that ball to right field, even ahead in the count to Munson earlier. He's trying to slap a pitch to right field. As this game progresses. The shadows around the mound area now as they get out a little bit further and the game gets into about the third or fourth inning. It gets really tough. There you see the shadows with Nolan Ryan on the mound. They don't figure Thurman to pull him because the center fielder Miller shades him to right and instead he walks in. That will bring up Greg Nettles who is struggling at the plate of late. Here's the pitch that put Munson on first base. Pretty close. But it was up. That was at 259, and that's not that far off his career average. But he has not been productive of late. No, he's been in a deep slump for a long number of weeks. Isn't quite aware of what he's doing wrong, but he's been through it before, and he's always come out of it. I was watching him in the hitting cage before the game. Pitch is low. Looked like the bat weighed about 30 pounds. Tell you when you get 16 hits against Seattle and 14 runs and you go 0 for 6, you start thinking. I think Keith brought up a, a very important point too with, with Munson Nettles is hard. going and the throw through and he's gone. Here's a perfect throw by Brian Downing. Ryan with a fastball. Downing gets out quickly and throws a strike to Anderson covering at second. And they get Thurman Munson. I was watching a tag by Anderson on this play. It didn't look like he even touched Munson. Let's see. I didn't think he did. <laughs> well, the ball's there, there, you're out. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> right. <laughs> but nonetheless, in evidence, as you looked at a call ball of what Martin's been doing with this club, he's led them to a record of 15 and 9 since he took over. Munson is a good runner for a catcher and he's been getting base running efforts out of Pinella Munson unexpected sources try and keep the other team off balance three balls and no strikes to Nettles there's one three and one one of the things to remember I'm sure about Mr. Nettles though is he is a streak hitter of all streak hitters there are times when he comes to the ball yard and you cannot get him out over the last three years he's averaged 32 home runs and 97 runs batted in so his time may be in front of him and if it is true that his streak is coming it'll come probably at a very good time for the Yankees there's another strike called on the outside corner just nipped it. Now the count is full three two. I, think I was going to say about Nettles a moment ago key to the fact that over the last few weeks Nettles has been hitting a lot of balls to the opposite field you brought up a point that he may be a little bit tired and that's the thing that shows it with Nettles a lot of balls hit to the opposite field. This guy's a dead full hitter. Three two pitch. Fouls it back and he foul back ball four. But with Ryan you must protect yourself because his curve snaps hard late. Most of those base hits uh, in fact uh, virtually all of them against California came in the early part of the year when Greg was off strong. I think guys worry about Nolan Ryan. They don't worry about 0 for 4 in a game like this, Twilight. They it's worry about 0 for 27. <laughs> yeah. Right. And surviving. That's fouled away, and that was a good pitch. This is the ballpark where the Los Angeles Rams will hang their helmets as the 1980 season. 
They're going to move the big A next week. A couple of hundred tons of it. And there's a man right there in the California dugout that's sure going to be welcome back. Though, as I said, Willie Aikens done an outstanding job for him. But having Aikens and Carew both available to play first gives you an idea of the depth of this California ball club that they've been able to build into it. Nettles strikes out on an high, high fastball, and the inning comes to an end empty for the New York Yankees. Yankees nothing, California coming to bat. The lineup for the California Angels, Rick Miller leading off at 289. The brilliant young third baseman, Connie Lansford at 313. Dan Ford next, 285, 11 home runs, tough. Don Bella, incredibly, with 80 RBIs, 21 home runs. Willie Aikens at 280, 57 ribbies. Brian Downing at 346. What a surprise. And then Joe Rudy at 233, but he'll get up there. And then Bobby Gritch at 302 with 18 home runs. Finally, Jimmy Anderson at 267. Here's Keith. Defense for the New York Yankees <clears throat> tonight. Outside, it is Pinella, Mercer, and Jackson left to right. Inside, it's Nettles, Dent, Randolph, Chambliss, Munson back to the plate, and Luis Tiant is on the mound. He had a one-hitter against Oakland in his last outing, won the ball game two to nothing. He's got every pitch that you ever heard about, read about, and three more. Exactly right, Keith. They talk about Nolan Ryan being tough in the twilight. The same holds true for a guy like Tion. He's got such an unorthodox style of delivery. Turns his back to the hitter, straight overhand, sidearm, throws underhand once in a while. As you said, Louis Tion throws anything, everything, plus maybe even a pork ball this year, they say. Well, here comes Miller, Lansford, and Ford in that order. Miller returning to action on Monday after coming off the disabled list with a broken bone in his left hand. He's got a little splint underneath the wrappings for some stability because the wrist is still weak. But a fine defensive outfielder, and he has been hot at the plate since he came back. Nine for 18. Rick Miller came over from Boston. What a place for him to play over there, and he's a kind of an athlete who's good enough to be playing for somebody. He finally found his way <laughs> to Los Angeles, and Tiot snaps a little slider on the outside corner for a goal strike. I love that pitch. It's so reminiscent, though not in the quite the arc of Rip Sewell's old blooper pitch. Pass ball inside just to bend him a little bit, and it's one and one. Darren Johnson coaching at first base for California, and. Uh, there's a name from out of the past. Bobby Knopf is at his normal position at third base, though he is the acting manager tonight. The numbers on Louis Tiot against California. Two and one pitch to the leadoff man for the Angels, Rick Miller. It's up high. It's two and two. Uh, three and one. Excuse me. Nettles has moved well off the line at third base and standing close on the grass. Miller with good speed will put it on the ground for you. This is a relatively soft infield. Now Greg's on the grass. Miller strokes it toward Bucky Dent at shortstop. And Dent handles it. One down. It just had a quick look at a youngster next to Billy Martin in the dugout. There are two youngsters there. One of them is Roy White's little boy. And the kid is a riot. He knows every player in the big leagues. He's got the bubblegum cards. And Billy called him over before the game today, and he said, will you tell Howard your latest trade? And he said, I traded Billy Martin. <laughs> I said, for whom? He said, for the Oakland manager. <laughs> Carney Lansford at 313 takes a breaking pitch inside and tight. I like to read White Roy's boys comment a couple of weeks ago when Bobby Mercer had moved from the Cubs over to the Yankees. Change up is hit high in the air to left field. Playable. Vanilla calls and makes the catch for the second out. Yes. Batting third, number 15. They were talking about what Ray number Hill. to give uh, Bobby, Ray and uh, certain Four. numbers, of course, and the Yankees are not available. And he said, uh, Reed said, why don't you give him uh, Yogi's number? And uh, 
or number eight. And somebody said, well, you can't. That's Yogi Berra's number. He said, he's not doing a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Dan Ford, severely closed stance, but he has power. He took Paul Split off uh, way up on the bank next to the freeway in Kansas City a few days ago. Good solid 285 hitter. He slices this one foul to the right side out of play. Look at that close stance on Ford, Keith. He's more of a right field, right center field hitter with hard stuff. Anything off speed, if you make a mistake inside off speed stuff, he'll pull you and hit you hard. He came over from the Twins for Ron Jackson and Dan Goodwin. Nobody aboard for California in the bottom of the first inning. Count is one and one on Ford. You've got two out. Louis bounces one. I love to watch Louis pitch. That one hitter this past Sunday was the third of his career. He never has pitched a no hitter. And uh, his last one hitter came in 1968 when he was with Cleveland and it was against the Yankees. And the guy who got the hit got it in the first inning. It was the last hit he ever got in the big leagues. A fella named Mickey Mantle. <laughs> got a lot, I'll tell you that, before he packed it in. Ball is hit foul to the right side out of play. You've got a pretty funny act out here now. Uh, Howard mentioned the fact that Tion turns his back on the batter just before he makes his delivery to the plate. Well, you look at Ford standing in the batter's box, and for a split second, what you have is a hitter with his back to the pitcher, and the pitcher with his back to the hitter. You look in from center field, and you can see now as Ford takes his stance, just how severely closed he is, literally with his back to the pitcher. By the time Louis swings around now, it's back to back. And that's low. Louis turn around and say, this guy kidding? What are you doing? <laughs> Three two pitches fouled away. Lordy swung late on that. I thought the pitch was past him. Got Thurman Munson in the game very quickly. He sure did. Walked him upside the head. <laughs> crowd still filing in. Big crowd. Tomorrow night's game is also a wall to wall sellout. 3 2 and Ford takes outside. Coming up now, one of the hottest hitters in baseball, Don Bell, 80 RBIs, 21 home runs. I talked to him about his efforts thus far. Don, you've just about gone crazy at the plate this year. How come? Well, the first part of the year, I had Rod Carew hitting in front of me, and they pitched around Rod uh, a lot the first two months of the season. I had 50 RBIs the first two months, and he deserted me in June, and I had 11. And uh, so in July, I really picked up. Uh, I had a bad hand the first part of you know June and I just didn't hit the ball well but right now I'm back on track and I'm swinging the bat great right now. Three game comments Don Baylor historically his most productive months are August and September after this kind of a start goodness knows what he's liable to do. At one point he had a couple of two home run games had nine home runs in nine games. There are the figures month by month he told you about June and July. <laughs> Board off first, Tion holding him close. Family and I were down to see the Angels play Oakland on July 4, and he hit a shot almost in the scoreboard. Side wheels, and it's good for a strike, and it's one and one. Got to tell you. The Dodgers, with their terrible troubles, got the Mets into winning ways, which is no small task. The Mets won the first of two, seven to six over the Giants today. The 1 1 pitch to Baylor, standing deep in the box to look at Tion as long as he can before he cuts loose on the pitch and he fouls it back. And it's one and two. California having scored. More runs than anybody else in the American League. They have been hammering the ball. Ford has stolen five, been caught three times this year. He's your base runner. 
And the one two pitch to Baylor. Outside even at two. Hey, you talk about this California ball club, Keith, the, the amount of runs they've been scoring and, and it's been unbelievable. The hitting is the, the thing that's really carried him. In years past, it's been pitching. But they are hurting for pitching. No left-handed starters. Tanana is gone. They have one left-hander in the bullpen, LaRoche, and he has been hit hard, so it's been all hitting for California. 2-2. Two, two. High. Full at 3-2. It's placed a very great burden on Nolan Ryan, something I talked to him about before today's game. The same time they've had brilliant relieving from young Mark Flynn. He's Strutton. been the guy that's really been the, the stopper in the bullpen. Last year it was LaRoche. This year he's been hit hard. It's been LaRoche hard is showing some signs, Bobby, of coming back a little bit. His last couple of outings, he's uh, been quite good. There goes Ford on three and two, and Baylor walks. So Louis Tiot, after getting the first two, has now walked two. Batting fifth, number 22. Willie Aiken, a 280 hitter with 57 Aiken. runs batted in. Before the year, he was on the roster in pencil only as pinch hitter and perhaps some DH. Had a good spring. And he came on to replace Dan Ford, who was hurt early. Hit five home runs in eight games. And now, with Guru hurt, he's been playing first base and the DH. Willie Mays Aiken. Anything like the original is more than acceptable. Two out, two on. No score, bottom of the first inning. Louis Tiant pitches and gets a strike on Aiken. They'd send him, he'd come up to the big club and he'd last a while and he'd go at his young a couple of years ago and he'd go back to Salt Lake and he'd wear everybody out over there and then he'd come back up and then he'd go back, but he's arrived now. The amazing thing about Aiken's Keith, the fact that he's only played in 67 games. Yeah. That pitch is low. His managers in uh, the minor leagues were the two people who are coaching at the corners for California. Bobby Knopp, A and double A, and Darren Johnson in triple A. I'm sure that helps a young man. Louis throws a balloon up there that floats in high to make it two and one. Well, he's thrown 11 different pitches already. Having a little trouble getting him in the strike zone. Plate umpire is Jim Evans. Get on the ground sharply. Chris Chambliss gets a good bounce out of it. Makes the play at first himself, and the inning is over. So the Angels get a couple aboard, but can't move them along. And after one inning of play, we have no score. Back with more baseball after this word from our local station. Your attention, please. Son. Reggie Jackson. For the Yankees, the middle of the order. Reggie Jackson, Lou Pinella, and Chris Chambliss. Reggie now at 290, 16 home runs. He has struck out 21 times in 58 lifetime appearances against Nolan Ryan. It's power against power. Things don't look much better today. Nolan threw 19 pitches in the first inning. We'll keep a steady running tab on that, remembering that he threw 140 pitches this past Monday. He's working with three days rest. He's low and away on his first pitch to Reggie for ball one. I don't take seriously the number of times a pitcher has struck out Jackson. That doesn't diminish Jackson's threat. Foul back here. The thing I like about this confrontation, Howard, between these two guys, Jackson's a super fastball hitter. Of course, Nolan Ryan, strictly a power type pitcher with a fastball. I like to see him challenge a guy like Jackson. But the thing that the thing that was so big for Nolan Ryan on Monday night, the fact that he had such an outstanding curveball against the Red Sox, along with a great fastball. See how he works to Jackson. One and one to Red, outside and high ball two. He does not have the breaking pitch. They'll just sit in there. Guys like Reggie will sit in there and wait for that lay on that fastball. And he doesn't have that breaking pitch. He's not going to win too often. Well, that's why Chambliss hits Ryan so well. And the strike. Two and two. Chambliss, the one Yankee who's got a career average of over 300 against Ryan. And he says very simply, I just look for the fastball and that's it. Took him a long time to get his curve in hand. Five years to develop it. High to the left side. Joe Rudy coming over near the line has a play and makes the catch. 
Coming up now, Luke Pinella, who escaped relatively unscathed from the Seattle Kingdom, but not without an ear altercation. Listen. Lou, uh, want to tell me about the San Diego chicken? Well, we were playing in Seattle, and you know, as, as everybody knows, we don't play very well there, or we haven't played very well there, and uh, uh, the chicken was having a little more fun with us uh, uh, than I thought he was entitled to. Uh, I feel that the chicken's good for baseball. Let him stay outside of the white lines. Uh, let him stay in top of the dugout or in the stands, but uh, don't clown around too much at the players, especially after they're getting beat uh, like we were. Uh, I just threw my glove at him. I had some words with him. He started clowning around with me. I told him I was going to make him a Purdue broiler if uh, <laughs> kept messing around with me. Breaking pitch is in for strike two now to Pinella. Well, the couple breaking pitches that he has thrown tonight, Keith, and a beauty dropped off a table. Mm. Came out on three pitches. Excuse me. It was a Purdue broiler on that one. <laughs> Say that again. Off the table. Mm. Chris Shambliss now. Let's see. Those uh, don't mean what some of you might think now. The clan is not in town. Those are K's that are hung up there. Shambliss grounds at the shortstop Anderson, who has to hurry with it after failing to get the handle. But those K's are hung up by a group of fans over there to indicate the number of strikeouts Ryan's recorded. Nothing for the Yankees, top of the second. After one and a half innings, no score. Brian Downing, Joe Rudy, Bobby Gritch. Downing, a lifetime 246 hitter, as you see the line score in the game. Now, He's second in the American League. Only Roy Smalley of Minnesota has a higher average than Brian Downey. 346. Brian's an interesting case. Rejected almost from the beginning, then proving himself with the White Sox as a good fastball hitter. With the Angels, he's learned how to handle a curveball. And the net result is the average just recited by Keith Jackson. And a very unusual stance at the plate. Watch him from center field now. You see he's wide open. As the pitch comes to the plate, he steps toward it with a little hitch in it, and it's inside from Louis for ball one. There's the American League batting leaders, and you can see the presence of Mr. Downey. Over the top, snaps in, and it's one and one. You know, Keith, you talked about that wide open stance by Downing. He said it's very important for him. There you see him wide open. Very important for him to bring that front foot toward the plate. I think there's only one guy that I've ever seen that hit out of an open stance like that and the stride going the same way. That was Clemente. He used a very, very long bat and never went into the pitch. He hit out of a wide open stance, but Downing goes right in. Up the middle it goes. First hit of the ball game. Montreal seeing its lead pad down in recent days, leading the Padres five to four. Game one, the eighth inning. Atlanta over Pittsburgh eight to two in the fourth. A grand slammer for Jeff Burrows. We told you about the Mets' victory over the Giants. Dodgers and Phillies died in the second. St. Louis, Houston later start. We'll keep you abreast of all of them. That was the eighth career grand slam for Jeff Burrows, incidentally. Those numbers on Joe Rudy a little deceiving. He's been hitting much better than that lately. Still the same fellow he's always been. Polite, quiet gentleman. Lives on 200 acres of land near Baker, Oregon. Posted land. Posted land, that's right. Lays it down foul. Clemente, eh? The only one you ever saw with that open a stance. No, not with that open a stance, but didn't go into the ball like Downing does. Roberto, when he'd stride with his front foot hard, I thought it went toward third base, but he had that long batty. What about batty. Fatty Fothergill with the Tigers in 27? Well, he hit from the left <laughs> side, though. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> Bobby Knopf asking Joe Rudy to move the base runner along. He fouled off the first pitch on the attempted bunt. The outfield is playing him deep. They respect his power. Brian Downing with quickness for a catcher at first base. Runs well. Rudy swinging away, fouls it back. And it's two strikes. 
Want to quickly tell you folks that nice thing that Fuzzy Bavese, who runs the front office of the Angels, did, lifted the blackout so that the local folks could see this game tonight. So on behalf of them and on behalf of us, Buzzaroo, thank you very much. Attendance up more than 372,000 for the Angels this year. That's the best in baseball. The two strike pitch coming now to Rudy. And he swings and strikes out. Up comes one of the remarkable stories in Major League Baseball this year. Bobby Grinch hitting at 302 with 18 home runs, 55 RBIs. Previous home run highs in the season had been seven and six back in the old days with Baltimore. His whole comeback, a magnificent story. A year ago, figured his career might be over due to a back problem. Great ball player. That high over his head. As Tion throws quickly the first, Downing has to go back in his on his tummy. Bobby pulled a hamstring, the right leg, 12 days ago, Kansas City. Didn't really know how. It's gotten worse and worse. Missed a couple of games against the Red Sox when they were out here. One more try over at first base, except Tion that time almost threw it away. The pitch is high and away to Bobby Gritch. Downing is two for four on the base pass. You can see the Angels have not done a whole lot of running in their last few games. They haven't had to. Been rattling the fences. For the parking lot. Shot. Oh, Nettles flags it down. Downing gets back to the first base. Now we'll have a timeout while Greg counts his fingers. <laughs> what a reflex action. Look at it again. Well, a bullet hit by Gretsch and Gretels appeared to have Nettles appeared to have lost that ball for a moment. The crowd behind home plate there, and it happens every once in a while, those balls that are hit back to the box are hit sharply on the infield. You lose them momentarily in the crowd, and Nettles appeared to have lost it for a second and then grabbed it. One of the great things about Nettles as a ball player is he compartmentalizes his thinking. When in a batting slump, he doesn't go into a fielding tailspin. He is there as he is always the greatest. Jimmy Anderson, the shortstop, takes a fastball on the outside corner for strike one. He's only 22 and very likely the shortstop of the future for California. Been struggling a little bit with a sore shoulder. He's a scrappy little battler. Strike went far enough. Look at this play by Greg again, and then think of what Bob Euchre said, the possible loss of vision due to the crowd behind the plate. The ball actually knocked him down. Two strikes pitch to Anderson. He's gone. So the Angels get a leadoff single from Brian Downing, but they can't do anything about it, and we play two innings of play in Anaheim. We have no score. We'll go now to the top of the third inning. For the New York Yankees, Jim Spencer, Willie Randolph, and Bucky Dent. Spencer, an ex-Angel. He's the designated hitter. He has eight home runs. He's dangerous. In batting practice, he knocked four or five of them in the seats or out there in that hole they're digging for the enlargement of Anaheim Stadium. I want to tell you a story about some of the holes around Anaheim Stadium before the night's over involving Lee Walls. Spencer hits it. Big chopper out to Bobby Gritch, who throws him out. And you've got one away. Ryan now has thrown 29 pitches in the ball game. Number 30, second base, Willie Randolph. Coming down. When you look at the fact that he threw 19 in the first inning, <laughs> exactly the pace he would want to throw at. I asked him the other night, Howard, about the 140 pitches, if that was rather high for him, and he said it was. And I think Keith talked earlier about the fact that Ryan has cut down on the walks. Anytime you got the kind of velocity and the strikeout potential that Ryan does, you're going to throw a lot of pitches. He had problems earlier in the season. Larry Sherry, the California pitching coach, talked him into spending more time in the bullpen before each starting assignment. Get himself a little more relaxed. 
Larry Sherry would know about that. Pitching hero out in the bullpen of the 59 World Series. Won the Babe Ruth Award as the MVP. He'd know about that. Here's the kid who's been getting on base so effectively for the Yankees. Ryan is now going to three and one against Randolph. Willie had a four for four night. Final game up in Seattle. Here's a pitch that Ryan wanted. And not that bad a pitch. Around the knees, the outside corner. Walk Randolph. That's the second walk of the game. Bucky Dent, the shortstop coming up. Fourth of July. Late at six o'clock. Oakland A's were here. Lee Walls, first base coach for Oakland, and they've got big holes dug up out there where they're expanding and moving the scoreboard and all that kind of stuff. Normally you come out of the clubhouse exit and you turn left to get on the bus. <laughs> Walls comes out, makes the usual turn left, and promptly falls in a six-foot hole. <laughs> they have turned the lights down for the fireworks. <laughs> Lee's rolling around down in all that dust and everything, lost his glasses, tore his britches, and about that time the fireworks started, and you know where he thought he had gone. <laughs> Time he climbed out, he had to miss the bus, and they throw the ball away at first base, and Randolph counters down to second. So it'll be an error on the pitcher, Ryan. You'll see that last play one more time. Ryan turning and throwing toward first base, and the ball behind the runner. And there you see Randolph heading for second. I don't know if Aikens ever saw that throw coming from Ryan. Sure did either. And it went between them. All right, now an opportunity for Dent. Yankees have no hits so far in the game here in the top of the third inning. They have speed at second base. Dent looks at speed, heat for strike. Yankees are going crazy with their inconsistency of run production. Two games, they had two runs against Seattle, total of five hits. Then 16 hits, 14 runs. That's foul and strike two. Please watch the call. It's very close. He's safe. It's a 4 4 tie, and the Sox don't like it at all. Each team scored three. Getting back, it's true. Tommy John had a bad outing against Seattle, but Gidry's was. Two strike pitch. Gone. Bye bye, baby. Mm. Fired. I'll tell you, that's got to be a hundred mile an hour pitch right there. No Fired. contest Fired. right here. Fastball around the outside part of the plate. Look at this, right on the outside part. Tell right taking. over the outside corner. Tell me. Fastball that came back in. Two down. Randolph at second. Here's Bobby Mercer. Bobby out on a fly ball to the left fielder Rudy. First time up. Or to the right. Again, throws that's nine or a seven. Be Danny Ford caught it over in right field. Pitch is just outside. You know, when you watch a guy like Nolan Ryan, the overpowering fastball. Now, when you're you're standing up there hitting against him, when he starts spot pitching, hitting the outside part, the inside part, it's really unbelievably tough. Bad enough, you got to face the express and the great curveball. He's standing in the sunshine. All around him is shadow. Boom, here it comes, and there's a strike. First wow. really big game I ever saw Ryan perform in was the year of the Miracle Mets 69 playoff game, Shea Stadium against Atlanta. And he came on in relief, saved that game, totally dominated it, and you could see the Nolan Ryan of the future. And oddly traded by the Mets. For the Angels' present manager, Jim Fergosi. Just outside, close. Just outside. Ryan's grumbling about it. What a team you could build out of the men the Mets have traded away. Here's that last pitch again. These are the pitches that Ryan really wants. He says, everybody knows I can throw hard, I can throw balls across the plate if I want, but these are the kind of pitches that I want. The corner pitches, missing the Mercer. Think there's some preconditioning on the part of the arbiters, expecting him to be a little fatter on the plate with it. And he's not, has, doesn't have the reputation of being a nibbler. Three and one now. They all talked about working the plate tonight too, Keith. 
Who, me? Yeah. <laughs> Where's my flag vest? <laughs> Jim Evans back at the plate tonight. Fred Spin at first, Rich Garcia second, Larry Barnett at third. Those are the umpires. Outfield playing Mercer straight away. Three and one pitch now with two out and Randolph at second. Bobby swings through it and it's full of three two. Say this Mercer took a good cut. A good cut. Just overpowered by that pitch. Incidentally in that playoff game I mentioned Nolan Ryan got the win. Never forget when he first reported to St. Petersburg. They knew he was a whiz kid instantly. 3-2 pitch, Mercer fouls it back. Bobby hanging in. Another Oklahoman standing there with a piece of lumber in his hand. Bobby not having an easy time of it at the plate. Yeah, but he's steady. Three two coming. Yankees got a base runner for a second, but they leave him there after two and a half. No score from California. Line score in the game so far. Nothing but goose eggs up there for the Yankees. Here we go to the top of the order for California. Bottom of the third inning, it's Rick Miller, Carney Lansford, Dan Ford. Tion's Tion's getting better. Tion huh? just has to hold together and give nothing yeah. away because Ryan is really blowing that ball. It's the kind of game, the way it started anyway. Got to win one to nothing or two to one, whomever. That's out into right center, carrying pretty well. Mercer on the move, flags it down. Ball was hit with some authority. One out. Among the Yankees' struggles, the problems with the center field is Rivers on the disabled list injury, Veniquez on the disabled list injury. They are authentic center fielders. Mercer, in perfect truth, is not. The Yankees have suffered three times with Bobby's inability to go back on the ball over the head. Not a rapid Bobby, but that's a statement of what his problems are in center field. Carney Lansford fouls it away. Lansford with a fly ball to left field. His first time up tonight. If Bill Rigney does nothing else for the rest of his life for the Angels, he's entitled to be paid for finding Connie Lansford. He's his boy, lock, stock, and barrel, and what a young player. Well, I tell you, he's turned himself into an outstanding third baseman, Howard. He's got good range. He's quick at third, good throwing arm. He's going to hit with a little more power, too, as he grows a little bit. Look at that, leading the league in runs scoring. At Palm Springs, where the Angels trained last year, I had a long talk with Rig, and he said, wait, you see this kid at third. He was talking, of course, about Lansford, and he's proved out. Now he comes over the top to make it 2-2. Two -two. They're three brothers. One of them just signed, was drafted to sign. Lansford was one of the guys that the Minnesota Twins wanted in the deal for Rod Carew, and they said, forget it. 2-2. Two -two. Breaks in low. The other brothers are Phil, who is playing with him. A ball in the Toronto system right now, and Jody, who is playing for the uh, San Diego Padres. And there are two others who are still growing. Back three. The old master, a little bit of this and a little bit of that and another strikeout. That's true, Keith, and that's the beauty of that man as you look at right him and look at this pitch and again. Four. When you've been around as long as he has, gotten out as many batters as he has, faced the best of them, you're absolutely fearless. He just does his thing. If he gets hit, he gets hit. If he doesn't, he doesn't, but he is the profession. You talk about Nolan Ryan, the overpowering stuff. He struck out four tonight. 
That was number three for Tia, that's right. In a way, he reminds me of an old golfer, Julie Boros. I Almost never saw him throw. Unnoticedly, <laughs> yeah, he could throw, believe me. Unnoticedly won two U.S. Opens because he was the profession. That's the way Tion is. One and one. More cracks and by Yurka, you'll understand why he's not to appear on the Carson <laughs> show ever again in the future. <laughs> No, and when Dan it, Ford walked up there, it looked like he was trying to negotiate the size of the plate with Jim Evans. <laughs> talking again over Howard, you saw this guy with Cleveland when he could really throw. Tia, talk about overpowering stuff, fastball, curve, and he threw from every way like he does now, only had a lot better fastball. Big strikeout pitcher then. I've seen most of them come and go, including you. <laughs> no, you were a survivor. No man ever lasted longer with less talent. <laughs> <laughs> Two and one pitch. Stroke to right side with a drop base hit. That's the second hit of the ball game for the California Angels. Comes with two outs and brings to the plate Don Baylor. Don Baylor. That gets the crowd up. Now let's see what the Yankees do defensively for Baylor. Everybody's going to the left side. Baltimore used three men on the left side of the infield. Willie Wilson, when Kansas City was here, played him about 15 feet off the left field line. You can see the Yankees have moved over noticeably as Nettle goes, Nettles went tight to the line down at third. They have some good, clean fun in this ballpark. The high fly ball, that is hooking foul. Not the like seats. the mess in Chicago last night. And perhaps you heard the organist in the background as Don Baylor came up to the plate singing the old Bing Crosby head of so many years ago. Don't fence me in. They haven't been able to fence Don Baylor in. <laughs> Billy Martin at the moment. Somebody let him out. <laughs> Billy was paraphrasing John Keats at Seattle when he said, my heart aches and the drowsy numbness <laughs> pains my sense. <laughs> Ford edges off first. Tiant got to be careful with the big guy. Outside, one and one. Eighty RBIs. Eight zero. He's only just begun. Another half season to go. One one pitch. Hit sharply. Nettles can't block it. Left field face hit. And Ford's going to third. And he makes it. He had a little hesitation at second base. He saw Pinella come in and Lou went over to pick up the ball. And then he broke and went on to third. The well, look at another it again. Super play. You'll see Nettles just flag it a bit. Deflect its course. That's why Ford was able to take third base. There are some that even Nettles can't get. And so Willie Mays Aikens comes to the plate. Out of Seneca, South Carolina, which is about five miles or so from Clemson University. Home of Danny Ford. And the Clemson Tigers. Runners on the corner, two out. Aikens fouls it down the right side. That's forward at third. Baylor at first. Angels have three hits. The Yankees are hitless. Lions fan four. Four. Tion has fan three. Bottom of the third inning. The first real threat in the ball game by either team. And the change is high. Louis changed his training habits a little this year. He runs twice as much on his off days, he says. Kept his weight at 201. And improved the quality of his cigars. Right field base hit, Angels lead. As Ford comes in to score from third. Got a low 
breaking ball from Tiot that time. And he ripped it to right field. Tiot with his overhand curveball now. Down around the knees and watch Akins. Mark said he's right on it. Beautiful. So the Angels now with four hits in the game take a one nothing lead bottom of the third inning. Here's Brian Downing who had the first hit of the ball game back in the second inning of Dion. Two out two on one in. Baylor still has good speed at second base and the pitch is in for a strike. Remember what we said up against the Nolan Ryan you got to hang in there you got to make it a one run ball game if you're going to beat him. of 8 no. Side wheeling kid keeps the ball low, throws a lot of ground balls. It's been critical to the Yankees still sustaining pen and hopes. But now Cleveland with a two run lead. Uh, Cleveland, California. <laughs> Too many red eyes. They cloned Cleveland and that brought <laughs> Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> so long. Good luck. <laughs> Want to buy my hard hat? <laughs> Five hits now for California. Joe Rudy, and this is a guy that doesn't kill all that many rallies either. Billy Martin, Art Fowler in the Yankee dugout. 64 pitches so far for Tian. Runners on the corner. And Rudy looks at the outside corner for a call strike and backs out in disbelief. Joe won't save himself. Here's one more time. That last fastball by Tian off the outside corner. It sure was. But a strike. <laughs> no, Ryan's not getting that call. I can't he did. see it. Nobody might hear me. <laughs> You're right. I can't see it. Oh, it's hit high. It hit deep. And if it's fair, it's gone. It's foul. Oh, my goodness. That woke up the big house here. Just a foul. Hanging breaking ball from Tiant. Rudy got it all but foul. One and two, Tiant. With Willie Akins at third base, Brian Downing at first base, and two runs are in for a two to nothing lead. Angels in the bottom of the third inning. Leading Texas by one game in the American League West, with Texas playing in Kansas City tonight. And the Royals have really been struggling. They came in here and swept California and looked like world beaters, but since that time, they've just been wobbling. That pitch is just outside. The infield is now almost totally covered in shadow. Rudy strikes out, and the inning is over. But it's profitable for California. After three complete innings of play, the Angels lead the Yankees two to nothing. Tomorrow. Well, look at that. They don't even know Euchre's here, Chief. Yeah, yeah, but well, we. Well, Meredith's not work. here either. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
It'll be Thurman Munson, Greg Nettles, and Reggie Jackson for the Yankees as we move to the top of the fourth inning. Nolan Ryan now, two runs. The good. The Yankees still nothing but zeros. Munson walked his first time, one of two walks issued by Ryan, and then thrown out. Downing to Anderson. Curve ball on the corner, and it's a call strike. Thurman being solicitous in his questioning of the call. Mr. Evans, sir. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> if you call another one like that, I want to spit on your <laughs> shoes when we go back to the top, bottom half of this inning. That's fouled away. See another good fastball that time from Ryan and Munson trying to hit that ball to right field. The pitch was from the middle part in. Tough enough to pull that ball. Munson tried to hit it toward right. Truth is, Thurman's been hitting too much to right lately. He knows about it. Hopefully, we'll hear from him later in the game because I interviewed him. Used to average 16 home runs a year. There's Ryan Gidry, the strikeout leaders. He's only got three home runs thus far this year. And he was lucky to survive that. Mm. That's pretty good pitch, too. Wasn't it? Yep. Good breaking ball, sharp breaking curveball by Nolan Ryan. On the outside corner. These are the kind of pitches that Ryan wants. Not a bad pitch either. Not at all. Oh. Gave him the bullet, and Thurman's gone. Strikeout number five. Coming up, Greg Nettles, a man who was very honest when he talked with me today about the return of Billy Martin as Yankee manager. Well, what's been your personal reaction to Martin's return and has he made a difference? I think it was a good uh, move on, uh, for the team because uh, you know last year when they got rid of him it was we needed a, a, to calm us down and at the time when he took over this year we needed somebody to fire us up and you know and Billy's the kind of guy to do it and he I think the time he took off uh, was almost a year now I think it uh, it settled him down a little bit and he's He's able to. He's handled himself a lot, uh, a lot better than he than he was toward the end last year. Three game comments of Greg Nettles, whose contract expires at the end of this season, and he rolls the ball on the ground to Bobby Gritch, boxes it around, throws him out, and he got two down. Greg did say that negotiations are in what you can call the serious stage. Here's Reggie. Reggie gets the booze of the crowd wherever he goes. He's reached the point where he's almost receptive to it. It just fires him up. He's grown accustomed to that pace. It is not totally beyond the pale of possibility. He could hang his hat in this ballpark next year. All right. If he does, you'll have a scoop. This is one of the clubs that would jump at a chance, I'm sure, to get a hold of him. If, in fact, he follows through on his pronouncement of some time back that he'd like to go somewhere else. It becomes a question of manpower, I would think, though. Whoever gets him will have to give up something. I would think. And uh, a lot. Well, that's what I mean. The quality, and I don't know that California's got that kind of quality that they can now afford to trade. Looking at California the way they are, they look to me like they've got a lot of quality. But they also have a very good man in right field. That's right. And the horse is doing the DH in for him this year. <laughs> Do that. You can say that again. <laughs> pitching, pitching, pitching. Everybody talks about needing a pitcher, a two or three. Reggie, big cut. And it's two and two. You know, you get a club like California, Keith, it's, I'm sure it would really upset the fans here, depending on how California finishes, of course, this year. They've got a good, solid ball club. We talked earlier, they may need a little pitching. They don't have a left-hander. Tanana is out now, and there's some doubt as to when he will pitch again. As you look at the California defense, the huge crowd here tonight, jammed up. To break up a ball club, to bring a guy like Jackson on, I think it would really upset the people here in California. Don't do it. That pitch is high and it's a full count three and two. There was a big brouhaha when uh, Bobby Bonds was traded away. A lot of 
griping and moaning about it, but turned out in the Vons deal that they can the Vasey produced five regulars on the field. Haven't heard much about it lately. It's Regis fouled that one no, back. Bobby's holding press conferences in Cleveland now. <laughs> he wants to leave that. Yeah, he said it's time to go. That's right. They've enjoyed him for two years. He's been around. Yeah, he's been around. San Francisco, here, Texas, Cleveland. And he's still a great ball player. Three two pitch to Reggie has hit a mile high to the infield. Now it's up to Ryan to call it. He calls Lansford third baseman and the inning is over. And so after three and a half innings here in Anaheim the Angels two the Yankees nothing. As you can see folks I'm with American League President Lee McPhail who has decreed that the White Sox forfeited yesterday's second scheduled game against Detroit in the twin bill where a, Maya, a riot marred the occasion. You want to state exactly what prompted that action Lee? Well Howard first I don't like to take action like this. I think games should be won on the playing field not by executive decree. But we had a situation there where uh, I would like to say that the people have more fun in White Sox Stadium than any place in baseball. But this was a, uh, a promotion that went beyond the contemplation of anybody and got out of hand and the umpires felt that the uh, playing field had been torn up so it was not playable and the crowd was not under control and Therefore, we couldn't continue the game. Okay, so you took the action. It speaks for itself. We return to the play-by-play -play with Keith Jackson. Thank you for coming by, Lee. See you back in the Big Apple. Bobby Gritch, the second baseman for California, in the bottom of the fourth inning. Jimmy Anderson, the shortstop. Rick Miller, the center fielder. The count on Gritch now is two balls and two strikes. It's been a long time since you've had a forfeit in the major leagues. Yes, indeed. But he did what he had to do. It was a bad thing for the city of Chicago, for the society in general, and you can't let that kind of thing get out of hand. So apply the penalty necessary. Bad days for Montreal as they continue to slide. San Diego rallied to beat them 7-5. to five. Winfield, his 21st home run. Bobby Gritch swings and misses on a high fastball. It was almost eye high, and there's one out. Interesting, isn't it? Coincidence, Lee McPhail was here as we continue on Monday Night Baseball, this Friday night edition being an example of trying to continue to cover all of the diverse stories of baseball in a new sense, as and when they happen. Five strikeouts now for Tiot. Here's Jim Anderson, who struck out swinging first time up. This time, Jimmy goes after the first pitch and fouls it back in the crowd. Pretty good catch up there in the upper deck. Hmm. Wearing a Yankee hat, wasn't he? Swing and a miss, and it's strike two. Well, Tiot's matching Ryan in the strikeout department. He's trailing two nothing. Both have struck out five. Six there. They appeal at first base. Red Spen says no. And it's one and two. Two and two. Close two, Keith. Mm -hmm. You come out, somebody's going to come out, and one of the pitchers come out with a black pencil in a minute, re outline the plate. <laughs> Foul back. Wonder why he's so happy. He's glad to be one back. Are you kidding? <laughs> well, maybe that's it. Four he has really done a job, Howard. Games. He sure has. High to the right side, coming back, coming back, and Chambliss stays with it. Chris near the stands makes the catch. Chris is a little wary of those pop fouls. He had one in Seattle that hit a speaker, and then Roberts on the next turn at bat, or rather the next swing, hit a home run. Now the top of the order for Rick Miller, 0 for 2. Earlier this year, before he was hurt, Rick uh, hit some line shots off. Luis.
including one that almost undressed him right back through the box. Good player. Got a chance to play here. He's much like the Martin kid with the Cubs. Quickly the scores Minnesota five Toronto four the six Cleveland over Milwaukee two to one in the second Detroit Chicago nothing nothing the second more coming. I with two nothing the Angels here the bottom of the fourth Royals and the Rangers died two two in the third Boston Oakland Baltimore Seattle later starts. There's game one final which we have given you San Diego over Montreal Atlanta 13 to 2 over Pittsburgh Cincinnati 1 to nothing in the first and rain and look at that blow off the wall at 390 feet and Miller is turning and going to third a triple. As I was saying Bob he got his chance to play. Here it is Game one more in. time. Just like Martin did when he went to the Cubs in Philadelphia. Got a high fastball from Tia. There you see Jackson giving chase near the wall. That ball bounces off the wall. Throw coming on from Reggie Jackson. There's Randolph. The throw sliding. Miller in the third with a triple. That's Mason number six off Louis Tia. Miller almost hit one out of here back in the third. His last time up. Fly deep to Mercer and Sutter. And another tough cookie up. Down the line strength, Keith, in this batting order. Oh. One of the things I think that sort of marks this team uh, is they're, they're not cocky, but they're confident. This, they, they sort of look like a bunch of ball players that have been melded into a team who feel like they can win. As Lansford hits it high in the air to left center field, but Mercer has a beat on it. And flags it down for the third out. So they leave Miller at third base. And Good after four innings of play, James California two, Palmer. New York nothing. Please report for security. It is two nothing, California. The Yankees will come up with Benella, Chambliss, and Spencer. We go to the top of the fifth inning, and folks in the Milwaukee area, here's a voice you've heard before. Mr. Bob Euchre. Okay, Keith, Penella, Chambliss, and Spencer here in the Yankee fifth inning. Nolan Ryan struck out five, walked a pair. Pinella's first time up, he struck out, takes a strike on one. The Yankees have nothing off Ryan in the top of the fifth. California, two runs, six hits off Tiant. Ryan lost his no hitter. against Boston back in the first inning it's last time out on Monday somebody reached him for an infield single early two strikes to Pinella Pinella started tonight's game at 318 eight home runs with 45 RBIs murder on the Ryan Express he's got it tonight in the air right field out of play by Pinella and it's still nothing in two. Ryan has not thrown that many breaking balls tonight, but the ones that he has thrown have been sharp breaking. Tough to see. On the outside corner, missed. One ball and two strikes. Let's beat the Giants as we told you seven to six in game one though the Giants had 17 hits the Phil's on the way now apparently playing good ball leading the Dodgers one to nothing in the six St. Louis over Houston one to nothing. Two balls two strikes on Pinellas Ryan missed with a curveball. Yogi Berra. Lawrence Peter at first base. Ball two strike two on Pinella. Ryan's fastball drilled to right field slicing foul. Got to remember Bob Ryan has twice gone seven and a third innings this year without allowing a hit on April 21st. He did it against Oakland that was broken up by Mitch Page June 18th against Texas that was broken up by Oscar Gamble. Well he'd love to throw that fifth no hitter. Well, that's the one thing that he really talks about. He would love to do it one more time for the fifth. Well you called a game recently when the Yankees were in dire straits when Sorensen there are the strikeouts listed when Larry Sorensen of the Brewers 
two ahead of them. Two balls, two strikes. Fouled back again by Pinello. As Sorensen had the Yankees no hit for seven innings plus before Chambliss reached him for a base hit. And then Bucky Dent. Those were the two hits. There's Pinello's career against Ryan. Six for 37. Nine strikeouts. Hitting at 162. Pinello leads off the Yankee. Fifth inning. There's Chris Chambliss. He's next. The 2-2 two -two pitch. The one outside. He missed. Full countdown. I tell you, he didn't miss by much. This is the sixth time in the game that Ryan has run the count. Three balls. He's three and two on Pinella. And the payoff pitch. And he missed. That's the third walk given up by Ryan. Okay, up comes Chris Chambliss, whom you just saw on deck. He is the one member of the Yankees with a lifetime batting average of Bedlam 300 against Nolan Ryan. Chris Chris he naturally Chambliss. looks fastball, but as he noted to me in an earlier talk, he also has had good success against the curve. When Ryan gets in trouble at times, Howard, it is with a breaking ball. Once in a while, he has a tendency to hang breaking balls. He's into the fastball strike on Chambliss. Oh, did he blow that one in? You can hear him popping way up here. One strike to Chambliss. His first time out. Thrown out by the shortstop, Jim Anderson. Low and outside. One ball and one strike. You know, people might wonder, Howard, what a catcher's hand would look like after a night with Nolan Ryan. But his ball is really not that tough to handle. He throws kind of a light fastball, they call it. He doesn't have a heavy type ball to handle. Who did you uh, catch like that? Cloninger had a Cloninger had yeah, Tony unbelievable Cloninger. sinker. Hankins, Anderson, relay, double play. Beautiful play by Akins, the one-handed grab, and so one of the more difficult double plays to execute. Look at it again. Watch the Chandler's reflexes of Akins. Good so wood on that. Yeah, you saw Akins. Plenty of time to get Chambliss. Ball was hit like a bullet. By Chambliss. Nice play by Ankin. 3 6 3. <laughs> Here's Spencer. Spencer's first time up. Tap to second. Breaking ball and Ryan missed. Slider from Nolan Ryan. One ball, no strikes on Spencer. See Ryan drive off that mound with that back leg. There's a good breaking ball. Counts even ball one, strike one. Beautiful pitch. He really drives. Take a look at his back leg when he starts bringing the pitch toward the plate. Look at him push off. Breaking ball and he missed a bit upstairs. Two balls and a strike on Spencer. Panella let it off with a walk and the double play ball by Chambliss. In the air and playable. Carney Lansford, the third baseman. And that retires the side. So the Yankees fail to score in the fifth. And at the end of four and a half innings, two nothing, California leads the Yankees. Leads it off here in the California fifth inning. He had a single and scored his last time up in the third. The Angels hit the Yankees with two in the third, all after two were out. Four base hits. Ford, Baylor with singles, run scoring single by Akins, and a run scoring single by Brian Downey. Tion's fastball is ripped foul for a strike on one. Tion has walked two, struck out five tonight. He walked a pair back in the first inning, but California couldn't score. Numero uno. Curveball in the air, right side, chased by Chambliss. He's got room. Near the lower box, he's got it one down. 
It'll bring up Don Baylor. He's been on twice, walked in the first, singled, and scored in the third. Baylor having a big year. Yeah, and he finished 14th in the All-Star voting among outfielders. I notice that the commissioner approves the system of fan voting and feels that their selections were relatively on even keel. But I think that that kind of statistic would uh, take issue with the commissioner. I don't know why the Jollity and the Yankee Club uh, dug out ducking from the foul ball, but I see no reason for Jollity trailing to oh, Tommy enough. John. Tommy John has reason for Jollity. 13 victories. Oh, one to Baylor. Curveball missed outside from Tia. I tell you, Baylor's always been one of my favorite players in the big league. I've really enjoyed Why? watching him. He's a hard player. I heard he's a tough guy. I've seen this guy drilled many times by pitches. He never says anything. Never says a word. Always goes to first base, but I'll tell you something. He gets on the base pass. Second baseman, short stops on a double play. Look out. Catchers. He's a hard, tough player. He doesn't like being a designated hitter. No, he'd he like doesn't. to play every day. He once requested that he be traded. Today he told me he withdraws the prior position. He likes being with the Angels in the present lofty yes, estate sir. for which he is substantially responsible. Gene Autry, cowboy out here with California. Love to win it for him. Now that's an interesting graphic. The way Tion has come on in the warm weather. 3-1 to Baylor. Good fastball by Tion. Reach back for a little extra. Full countdown. Well, I think very frankly, uh, the, the prime reason Don Baylor doesn't play the outfield and hasn't played it, he doesn't have that good defensive arm. They take liberties with Don Baylor. Played him at first base. 3-2 pitch. In the air and out of play by Baylor. Still a full count. Runners, runners really did take advantage of Don Baylor, but as Howard said, he's he's unhappy with a DH role with California. He'd like to play every day. He's having a big year, though. He's got to be happy. Three balls, two strikes. One out. We're in the California fifth inning. And they lead 2-0. Baylor, right next door. Look out, Howie. Well, talking about people who are unhappy with the DH role. He's another. Reggie Jackson. He's been to have a lot of pride. Well, a lot of guys say, Howard, they just don't get involved in the game if they can't play defensively. So it really keys them up as far as going to the plate and hitting the next time. Don't get much of a chance to redeem yourself. Check swing, foul. That's one thing about being a DH. You know, if you if you mess up at the plate, you hit it the double plays, you still got a chance to go in the outfield, infield play defensively, and come up with a play once in a while that kind of redeems you. Not only that, there's a kind of humiliation to being you mess up at the plate, you hit it the double plays, you still got a chance to go in the outfield, infield play defensively, and come up with a play once in a while that kind of redeems you. Not only that, there's a kind of humiliation to being publicly classified as an incomplete ball player. Wait a minute, Tom. <laughs> Three two to Baylor. Outside, he missed and not by much. That's walk number three given up by Louis Gian the second time that he has walked. Baylor, here it is again. Watch this. Close call. Thank you. It'll bring up Willie Akins, who's single driving in the Angels' first run back in the third. He's one for two tonight. Akins has had a big year for the Angels. Well, I'll tell you, he's really trimmed himself down. He's at 216 pounds now. Back in 75, he weighed 235. In high school, more than 250. A ball and no strikes. Akins tonight appearing in his 68th game for California. Now look at the stats on this guy hitting a 280 tonight. 14 home runs and 58 runs batted in in 68 games. Tion throw late on Don Baylor. Let me tell you, this kid was a football player. South Carolina State played in the same team as Donnie Shell, the great safety of the Steelers, who hits like a linebacker.
Baylor jumps to a lead at first. Back to the middle. Mucky Dent. Randolph and a relay in time. And that ends it for California here in the fifth inning. 6 4 3 style, the double play. So at the end of five innings, as you take one more look at this double play ball hit by Aikens right back to the box. He didn't hit it that sharply. There's Dent, Randolph, and the relay. At the end of five, it is still California leading 2 0. We'll be back with more baseball after this word from our local station. The lead. Well, that tells you how they feel here in Anaheim. The Angels on top in the West. Nolan Ryan against Willie Randolph. Good fastball for a strike, and it's 0-1. Ryan, through five innings, has thrown 73 pitches. Tion, through five, 95. Breaking ball, picked out by Downing. And the appeal on the call by the first base umpire, Fred Spence. Nothing doing. Ball one, strike one. Here's that breaking ball by Nolan Ryan and the check swing by Randolph. One ball and one strike. Lansford up close at third for Randolph. There's a strike on the outside quarter. Boy, Ryan is hitting spots tonight. Getting better and better. Mm. The Yankees have nothing through five innings. Ball one, strike two on Randolph. There's the curveball, missed outside. Uke, the Royals are getting belted again. Texas over the Royals, 6-2 to two in the fourth inning. Pat Putnam, that kid's coming on, got his 10th home run for the Rangers. The guy that got a job, the Rangers figured he could do the job at first base, and they got rid of Mike Hargrove. He said he has done a fine job. Hit number 10 tonight, inside the Randolph. Texas has pitching, too. Yes, sir. I want that big guy to the bullpen. You got that Jim guy, Kern, Kern you mm. bring him in. Fergie Jenkins, Sparky Lyle, there's Billy Martin. Trailing 2 0. Fishing accident accounts for the little adhesive on the bridge of the nose as Randolph fouls it off. Trying to bait a hook and a shrimp got away from him. <laughs> Tell you, he was lucky. He was telling me he could have lost an eye. Two kids in the dugout Roy White's kid, Greg Nettles' kid. Cute little scene. Three balls, two strikes on Randolph. Here's Ryan's payoff pitch. And he walked him. So the Yankees have the leadoff hitter on. And the leadoff hitter on back in the fifth inning when Manella walked. But Chambliss then hit into a 6-3-6-3 six, three, six, three double play. Here's Bucky Dent. Well, it's Nolan's fourth walk. Still a tight ball game, two to nothing. Dent was called out on strikes. His first time up in the third. He was strikeout number three for Ryan. Don't want to overbuild any tension, but I think he's at bat in the sixth inning and still hitless. Miss low and outside. One ball, no strikes. Now let's see if the, see if the Yankees send Randolph here to try and get something going. Jumps to his lead against Ryan. The best base runner, of course, especially with Rivers out. And he draws a throw, and he's back in time. Although Mickey hasn't been stealing bases as of yore. Too many injuries. Randolph has stolen 18. Counts even. Lucky trying to meet the ball and hit behind the runner. Willie Randolph, the runner at first. The Angels scored twice in the third. That's been it. The Yankees have had nothing off Ryan. And the throw to first. And Randolph again back in time. But just barely. He almost. almost had him going the wrong way. Willie put the tag on with a little authority, too. Notice this. <laughs> Four consecutive singles in the third inning. Four, Bella, Aikens, and Downing. In the air, short right field, Ford near the line. Easy play, he's got it. 
Lady knew Beck Bucky was trying to go to right, but he couldn't do it with any authority, and he couldn't advance the runner. One of those non-recorded statistics that are so critical in baseball. Murphy. Here's Bobby Mercer. Mercer fly to right field in the first, Burby. struck out swinging in the third. He was number four for Sunder. Ryan. There's Louis Tion in the Yankee dugout. Tion has pitched well, but he's trailing two nothing. He has matched Ryan in the strikeout department with five apiece. You saw that earlier graphic. The first eight times out, high earned run average. The next eight times out for Tion in the twos. Mercer, a good rip, fouled out of play. So what Louie is doing is keeping his team in the ball game every time he pitches among his recent starts. One of which included the one hitter last Sunday against Oakland. And that's what he's doing tonight. He's keeping his club in the ball game, but he can't get the help. Not against the likes of Nolan Ryan. One out, one strike. Throw to first, and again Randolph back. Nolan Ryan after his 12th win of the year tonight. He got number 11 on Monday against Boston. Blew it right by Mercer. The Express. Nothing in two. You know how hard a guy is throwing when hitters sit on fastballs and they consistently throw them by you. <laughs> Just. Makes the whole thing seem futile, doesn't it? That was a letter high fastball. Mercer had a good swing, but he was just blown away by it. Two strikes to Mercer. Curveball, tap foul. And it's still nothing in two. You know, we talked about Ryan too being in a in a slump a bit earlier, Howard. He in a Boy was hospitalized. The boy was struck by a car a while back, and he really went through some tough times. Nolan talked before the game about the cards and letters sent in by fans all over the country. Mercer in the air. Shortstop Anderson. Rudy's there. He makes the call and the catch to retire. Bobby Mercer. That ball belongs to the infielder until the outfielder calls him off. There you see the burden that's on Nolan Ryan, where his team is concerned. Pitching staff belabored by problems. Knapp injured. Tanana not pitching the way he used to pitch. With the help of a kid named Mark Clear, who's been spectacular in relief, Ryan has shouldered almost the whole of the burden. He's been doing it magnificently. Munson, late on a fastball, nothing in one. Tananas are now disabled. They are really worried about Frank Tanana. Two hour, they may. Tanana himself said he may not pitch the rest of the year. One strike on Munson. Nolan Ryan. Shortstop. Anderson, quick throw, got him. That ends the Yankees' sixth inning. New York gets no runs, no hits with one left. At the end of five and a half innings of play, it is still California leading New York by a score of two nothing. Breaking ball from T on his high. Hey, talk about Downing's hitting. This guy has done an outstanding job behind the plate for California, too. I'll tell you, when he was with Chicago, he had a tough assignment. Wilbur Wood, catching every day and then catching that guy once every second day or third day, depending on the rotation for Wood. <laughs> and he really battled. Ball one, strike one. Tia, outside, two and one. I remember Wilbur when he was a... Baby face little guy who showed up in Seattle in the old coast league. <laughs> That's when Keith Scott from Washington <laughs> State. Dion got the outside corner. <laughs> He's a pretty good pitcher. So time robbed him. Oh, he'd work every other day at times with the White Sox. Every two days. 
2 2 to Downing. Three and two now. Tion has run it full. Downing has had problems all year long. This guy is talking about injuries. Spring training, a hamstring, jam left thumb, pulled hamstring right leg, shoulder problems. Foul tipped and Munson can't hang on. Hey, think about all those injuries for Downing. He's only missed seven games this year. Three two count on Downing. This program being brought to you is exclusive of ABC Sports. Now let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. Channel 7, KABC TV, Los Angeles. Downing. Falling back off Tia. California leads it by a score of 2 0. They yeah. hit the Yankees with two in the third. Crowd sitting here placidly, just waiting for Ryan's next turn against the Yankees. The excitement now building. In the air, out of play. Ryan has yet to give up a base hit. When you've had four previous no hitters, you have a right to look for a fifth. That guy's a threat every time, right? Ryan tonight has walked four, struck out five. Tiot has matched him in the strikeout department. Louis has struck out five, walked three. Well, Phil Negroes one another. Randolph's going to have to hurry. Didn't get him. <laughs> Willie Randolph had to hurry, and Downing, legging it out, beat the throw. Third hit in tonight's game. Another example of the speed that this young catcher has. That High hanging chopper over the head of the pitcher. I told you earlier the infield is kind of soft here. By the time the ball got to Randolph, he didn't have much of a chance to do it. Well, he had to come to the ball in order to get the man, and he didn't do it. Well, when you're hot, you're hot. That's three out of three for Downing. He had an RBI single that he hit sharply enough, but just catch that ball was hit in the exactly perfect place. When you're hot, you're hot. Yes, sir. He started tonight at 346. Put him over the 350 mark. Here's Rudy. In the air, behind first base, Willie Randolph makes the call. That takes care of Joe Rudy. No, Rudy is nothing in three trips. He had struck out twice. Atlanta ripped the Bucks. Bobby 13 to four. Negro won as well. Bobby Horner had two home runs, 16 on the year. Oh, what a year that guy is having. And Jeff Burrows had a grand slammer. Much would he have so had if he had started early? Oh wow! Somber Billy Martin. Here's Bobby Gridge. High fastball from Tiant. One ball and no strikes. Bobby Knapp, former teammate right there, acting manager tonight. Tim Fregosi. Used to play around second with him in the hospital for three to four days. Internal problem. Tess. Two and nothing on Bobby Gritch. Howard talked earlier about the injuries that have plagued Gritch throughout his career. Back. Injuries. Disc. And a late swing. Two balls and a strike. There's Bobby. That's Bobby. Yes, sir. Played second to Fregosi short. Made Jim famous. <laughs> <laughs> and leading tonight, 2 0. He's a good fielder, Bobby. Started in the Braves organization. Runner at first is Brian Downing. Louis Tian trailing 2 0. Got the outside quarter. Good pitch. Boy, he's something. Work the inside, back your way. Minnesota still leading Toronto. Milwaukee has died Cleveland. White Sox leading Detroit. Two balls, two strikes on Gritch. One out, California sixth inning. Outside, full count again. 
Texas over the Royals. The other two games out here, later start. Remember, we started at 5 o'clock Pacific time. San Diego, winner over Montreal in game one of two. Cincinnati leading Chicago. We just gave you the Atlanta final, but the Cincinnati game, Marine delayed. 3 2 pitch runner goes. Out of play by Bobby Gretsch, and we'll do it again. Downing off and running on the pitch. And Downing, as Keith said, has got good speed for a catcher. Downing's one of those guys that can take the extra base on you. First to third. Phillies leading the Dodgers. Giants leading the Mets in game number two. St. Louis leading Houston one to nothing, and Houston and Montreal suddenly beset by troubles. So much of the year, the relatively unexpected leaders of their respective divisions, and now pressures grow at midseason. Three two to Bobby Gritch. and Brian Downing takes off. Gritch hits one back up the middle. Base hit. Here's Downing going to go to third. Bobby Gritch. Jim Anderson, the shortstop, nothing for two. He has struck out and popped the first. Tough spot for Dion. Desperately trying to keep the game relatively close. A no hitter for Nolan Ryan, but the Yankees two runs off the pace. There is Ron Davis again. Look at that record. It's going to be saves. interesting to see how Billy handles the circumstance in the bullpen now with Gossage coming back. Available this weekend, probably back in the form after the All Star game. You know, Keith, you look at the stats as you look at Billy Martin, you look at the stats on Davis. How could they expect any more out of Gossage than they've gotten out of that guy? 8 0. And he has really pitched well. He wasn't there. He wasn't there in May when the Yankees started falling way behind. Got his first couple of wins against Milwaukee. Yeah, he stopped them dead in Milwaukee. Here's Anderson. One out, runners at first and third. Tion missed outside. Brian Downing at third. And at first base, Bobby Gritch. This is where you gotta keep the game in hand. If you can. Yankee outfield plays Anderson hit the ball toward right field. Nettles on the infield, well off the line at third. Tion's 1-0 pitch. High fastball, Anderson chased it. Counts even, ball one, strike one. You see all those gas trucks passing on the freeway <laughs> out there? Empty. What are you telling us? <laughs> Fertile country. Ball one, strike one. Anderson takes outside. Munson back heading. And it's two balls and a strike. Tion through five and a third has thrown 117 pitches. There you see the line score in the sixth. Two balls and a strike to Anderson. Squeezes on and he fouls it. Oh, they had them both moving perfectly. I love that play. All Anderson has to do is get that ball down in fair territory. Downing scores and Gritch goes to second. They both broke perfectly and especially Downing from third. Squeeze play, the hit and run, the cutoff, the steal of home. Those are the real niceties of baseball. There's the kid again. Oh, the count now, ball two and strike two. Boy, Downing had a great break off third. Broke perfectly. Tion pitching from the stretch saw him all the way. So he had to break perfectly. Anderson back on the screen, and it's still two and two. Guy pitching from the windup. It's not so bad with that runner. I mean, he still has to get the good break off third. Otherwise, the pitcher either throws one behind you and knocks you down. There's, There's Nolan. Nolan Ryan. You know, got to know what he's thinking. Hasn't given up anything through six. On, 
Ball two and strike two on Anderson. Ryan and Tian have matched each other in the strikeout department, both with five. Ryan has walked four, Tian three. He's two and two on Anderson. In the air, right center field is going to score a run. Bobby Mercer is there. He's got it. Downing will score easily. And the California Eagles lead now 3 0. Give that kid Anderson credit. Low outside pitch. Had to protect the plate. Got out under the ball and hit it to relatively deep right center. Well, there you see a very happy California dugout. 3 0 now. Anderson's 13th RBI of the year. And back to the top of the order. Rick Miller, the center fielder. Miller is one for three. Grounded out in the first, fly to deep center in the third, and then triple off the wall in deep right center in the fourth. Bobby Gritch, the runner at first. And Tianson with a strike and a fastball. Still action in the Yankee bullpen. Oh, one pitch in the air, deep right center again. But Bobby Mercer is going to get there in time. He's got it, and that retires the side. But the Angels pick up one run here in the sixth inning on two hits. And at the end of six full innings of play, it is now California three and the New York Yankees nothing. A lot of people think Billy and I argue all the time. Actually, we agree on just about everything, right, Bill? You betcha, George. We even drink the same beer. Light beer from Miller. Light's got a third less calories than the regular beer, and it's less filling. And the best thing is it tastes so great. No, George, the best thing is less filling. No, Bill, it tastes great. Less filling, George. Billy, it tastes great. Less filling, George. Billy? Yeah, George. You're hired. Not again. <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Did I say hired? There you see the line score through six innings. California, three runs, eight hits, one error. The Yankees have nothing against Nolan Ryan. Top half of the seventh inning comes on. Greg Nettles will lead it off for the Yankees and back to call the action for you. Here's Keith Jackson. Thank you, Bobby. Through six innings, Ryan. 89 pitches, 35 of them, of them outside the strike zone, 54 of them in the strike zone. Greg Nettles, Reggie Jackson, Lou Pinella. Ryan's first pitch is high and away for ball one. Minnesota beating Toronto 6-4. Goats beat Lemanchik. Cubbage a home run. Mike Marshall's 18th save in his 54th appearance. Nettles winds it up and misses. Swung right through it. Oh, I mean, ball he's fired in there. Eating up. Four no hitters in his history already. Breaking pitch is inside. Stadium is virtually full, just an occasional empty seat. Somebody who surrendered in the struggle against the traffic or other problems, or perhaps stayed home to watch, thanks to Buzzy Bavese and the Angels lifting the blackout. That's a close pitch, but it's outside, three and one. Ryan again grumbles a little. He's been close a lot tonight, and as we indicated earlier, doesn't really feel he's getting as many breaks on the close call as he might. Nettles pops it back upstairs out of play to run it full at three and two. We did have interviews. Howard talked to a number of the players on both teams prior to the ball game tonight, but we've run into a little technical problem and we've not been able to solve it as of this time and unable to bring you those interviews as we've worked our way through this game. We're now in the top of the seventh inning with the Angels on top, 3-0, 3-8-1, and nothing but zeros for the Yankees. Well, you talk about challenging power against power. Nettles sitting on a fastball. There you see strikeout number six hung up for Nolan Ryan. Sitting on a 3-2 fastball, and Ryan blew it by him. Here is a moment that Reggie Jackson thrives on. The crowd are really getting on him now as he comes up in the seventh inning with an opportunity to ruin the string of zeros posted by Ryan. 
He hit a fly ball to left field and popped up to the third baseman his two previous times. Right. Eight more men to get. Eight more. Achieve a fifth no hit game. This was a kid who stood 6'2, weighed 150 pounds as a sophomore in high school. Even then, Major League scouts told him, You've got a Major League fastball, son, and then some. Right, too. Oh, I mean, he is low. Wow. You can sense he feels it now. There's the graphic. He wants to pass Sandy Koufax. He goes to the class alone. Goodbye. Two strike pitch to Jackson. High pop up to the left side for Carney Lensford. Two out. Names like Bob Feller, Cy Young. He's already passed them. Now he wants to pass the great left hander of the Dodgers. Maybe the toughest out in the Yankee order right now at the plate. Seven men to get. Eight hits, one error. The Yankees, no runs, no hits, no errors. Panella has struck out and walked. Right hand hitter waiting, a good contact hitter. Ryan Wines in the pitch, fastball outside, ball one. Panella has been a 300 hitter. Six years in the majors, he waits. The 1 0 pitch, curveball swerves in. Slices the strike zone. One and one. Lou hitting 318 with eight home runs, 45 RBIs. And Ryan, he is really anxious to pitch now. He can't wait. He pulls back, and the 1 1 pitch, fastball just off the end of the bat. And now it's one and two, and Ryan with the edge, and the crowd starting to applaud on just about every Ryan pitch. As he is working in the seventh inning with two outs, and he is yet to allow a hit. And the crowd building quickly in Anaheim Stadium. Two outs, seventh inning, no hits for the Yanks. Vanilla at the plate, the one-two pitch from Ryan. Fastball just outside, and the count levels two and two. And the crowd reacting before and after every pitch. Right on top of the rubber, looking in for the sign of Downing. Canelo waiting. Ryan not yes. He wins the 2-2 pitch. High and tight. And the count full. Three and two. Outfield shading Canelo to hit to the opposite field. Now the men on the left side of the infield, Anderson and Lansford possibly talking about where they should be positioned, especially Jimmy Anderson consulting with Lansford. The young man, the shortstop of the Angels. Who knows how critical that might become as Ryan working in the late stages of this game. No one on the mound, but on taking his time, getting established at home plate. Three balls and two strikes. Ryan winds and the 3 2 pitch. He's fucking out. There's the line score on the special Friday edition of Monday Night Baseball here on ABC. You may be watching some baseball history as New York has strung zeros all the way across the board and facing Nolan Ryan. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning for Carney Lansford, Dan Ford, and Don Baylor. Ryan needs six outs to become the first man with five no hitters in his career, and Lansford bangs it away at all of it happening on Friday the 13th. That's why we call it. A special edition. <laughs> we contemplated Look this very this possibility. <laughs> I thought he was going to do it last Monday. We were here. <laughs> Sharply up the middle for Lansford. First hit of the night for him, and number nine in the game for the Angels. 
Davis and Cott have been in the Yankee pen. Apparently the phone's ringing out there again. Immediately they go to work. Dion has given up only one extra base hit, that long, booming triple by Rick Miller. All the rest have been singles. Most of the ground ball variety. So although he's given up nine hits, he's held together. But against Nolan Ryan, <laughs> nubbers and nipplers. Dan Ford stands in with Lansford off first. Timothy Pressure now as we work our way Carlson. when the Yankees come up in the eighth and ninth. It's going to be exciting. This crowd will yell themselves hoarse every time Ryan gets one out. It's a slow roller at third. Infield is soft. Reynolds has no chance. Exactly on what I said about Lewis Dion tonight. He has not been the luckiest pitcher in the world. And against a man who looks so totally overpowering as Nolan Ryan. Well, the Yankee infield and outfield for Ford playing way around toward right side. There's Nolan Ryan. A little chew at the index finger fingernail. Giving up nothing. Well aware of what is almost within his grasp. And to do it against the world champions would be the nugget of all nuggets. Nobody out as Baylor is in with two aboard. And he fouls it back for strike one. Well, he had a good rip at a hanging curveball from Tia. Tion got away with a high breaking ball. There's Dolan Ryan again. Has allowed nothing to New York. Leading three-nothing. Struck out six. Going to the fingernails. Six strikeouts, seven strikeouts for Ryan. Lansford off second. Board at first. And it's one and one. Billy Mott. Mott Fowler. His pitching coach. Well aware, too, of what's happened. Billy Ever, the manager, wanting to contain the score. Then working in the bullpen. Outside and high. Two and one to Baylor. Gossage is now up in the pen for New York. Along with Cut. Look at that grapple. Two one to Baylor. Popped him up on the right side for Shambliss. Now it's Munson and Thurman calls it. Baylor fouls out to the catcher for the first out. Oh, and you saw Tion right alongside Munson and Shambliss, calling Munson all the way, holding Shambliss off as Thurman made the catch. Yeah, made a good pitch that time on Baylor. Got inside with a fastball, and there's Billy Martin. Out to the mound to talk with Tion. One out here in the seventh inning. Left-hander scheduled to come to the plate. As I said, Mott, no quitting him. Cotton Gossage, they bring in the left-hander. No staying with him. Well, if the Yankees could get a little long ball going, three nothing, they're still in the hunt with two innings. To go. Exactly what's in Martin's mind. Hasn't been Tion. He's pitched a good ball game tonight, right. failing three nothing. Yankees haven't got a base hit off Ryan. Nothing. Here's Willie Akins. The Angels' first baseman. With a single and an RBI in the ball game. High to the right side, way in the air for Reggie Jackson in right field. Lansford breaks at second, goes to third. Two out. Gotcha. 
Brian Downing. Brian Downing, three for three in the ball game. Haven't been able to get him out. Line the shot to center as first hit Keith. The next two. An infield, well, a sharp ground to pass Dent, and then an infield ground to behind second. Randolph just failed to get him as once again we look at the man who matters most. And when you're in his position, you just can't wait to get out there to get it done, especially when you feel so overpowering as he has clearly felt tonight. Two out runners at the corner. And Tiot's high with his first pitch. Those are the numbers on the two pitchers tonight. Normally you would look at those pitches, Keith, you would think it would be reversed. 135 for yeah. Ryan, 104 right. for Tia. Ball two. That is not a rubber ball that Luis is chewing on. That's uh, a little char with bubble gum wrapped around it. Have you tried it? Yes. Pretty good. Little bateau on a good and fast running creek with a few bass in it. Uh, a few <laughs> trout in it. Dandy. <laughs> Blow bubbles and smokes. <laughs> Three balls and no strikes now to Downey. Flies in the buttermilk. <laughs> As a strike. It's three and one now. Three nothing California. The story is Ryan. Chewing on a towel. Waiting to go back to the top of the eighth inning. Downing at the plate. Draws a walk. Downing is now the American League's leading hitter because Roy Smalling went 0 for 4 tonight. Downing is 3 for 3 and has moved to the lead in the American League batting race. Bases are now loaded for Joe Rudy. Story on Rudy. A couple of swinging strikeouts. Up to the second baseman. Victoria Leon directed Chet Forty has been registering the moods of Nolan Ryan as he sits in the dugout during this bottom half of the seventh inning. First, the fingernail biting. More recently, as you saw, the towel wiping and the cap wiping. The odd is high and away to Rudy for ball one. There is that almost unbearable eagerness to get out there to do it to finish it off. There has been no particular display of gamesmanship on the part of the Yankees as yet either is stalling a little bit interstepping out stepping in fiddling around hasn't been that we might see more of it over the next couple of innings that's on the corner for a strike. The only time that there might have been a Yankee hit was with a man on first, Chris Chambliss. Lashed a ground ball, but it nestled in the glove of Willie Aikens. As Rudy fouled one off, and Aikens started a first to short to first double play. Nolan Ryan again. Aikens playing right on the bag. Covering the runner. It was the only ball that was hit hard off Ryan. Mercer had a long fly ball his first time up, but ball by Chambliss. The bases are loaded with two out. The count is one and two on Joe Rudy. Get out into right center field. Bobby Mercer has room. Makes the catch. And the Angels leave three. After seven complete innings of play, three nothing California. We'll be back. To left. So Ryan, two innings away from being the only 
only man to hurl five no hitters in his career. And to take it the rest of the way, here is Big D. All right, Al, thank you very much. It'll be Chris Shambles, Jim Spencer, and Willie Randolph in that order. The first three scheduled to face Ryan here in the eighth inning. Ryan has not allowed a hit. He has struck out seven as Shambler stands in. He is 0 for 2 tonight. The pitch by Ryan is blown away off the glove of Downing in the count 1 and 0. The infield swung to their left slightly on the left side. Lansford backing off the line at third. The next pitch by Ryan is on the outside corner. Strike one call and Shambler just drops the bat and says something to home plate umpire Jim Evans. Comes right back in the 1 1 pitch. Strike two called outside corner. One ball, two strikes to count. The Angels three and the Yankees nothing. But the story as of now has to be Ryan. Nolan rocks into motion. Turns. Here's the 1 2 pitch outside in the count 2 and 2. Fans at the big A trying to do some umpiring with their heart. Two and two the count. On deck, Jim Spencer. Ryan peering in for the sign. He rocks in the motion. Two, two pitch, drive up the alley left center field. Miller off with the crack of the bat. He's there, pounds the glove, makes the catch. Bring on Jim Spencer. He is 0 for 2. Angel Baseball is brought to you by Chevrolet. In just two short years, over a million people have bought and enjoyed the Caprice and Impella. Spencer, left hand hitter, the designated hitter for manager Billy Martin, as Ryan delivers a first pitch, is foul left side, out of play. 0 and 1 the count. sellout crowd here at Anaheim Stadium tonight and they could be watching history in the making. Forty three thousand two hundred and fifty here at the Big A. Ryan with a new ball getting the sign from Downing. He rocks into motion the one strike pitch high and away and the count one and one. One strike the count. Ryan rocks back. He turns. There's the 1 1 pitch. A curveball. He went around. There the count. 1 and 2 to Spencer. Ryan threw a curveball down at Denise, and Spencer could not hold up. The crowd of 43,250 is the second highest. We'll check that. Ryan waiting for Spencer to get back in. The crowd again. The rhythmic applause that they've picked up here at the Big A this year. Rooting for the strikeout. The roar and the clap and the chant. Ryan rocks in the motion. Here's the 1-2 pitch. Drive up the alley. Coming on. Miller still coming on. And he can't make the play. It goes by him. As Spencer goes to second base. And we'll see how they call it. It appeared that Miller could have made an air. They call it an air. It appeared that Miller could have caught the ball. But as he came to make a dive, it appeared that the ball took off on him. The Yankee players out of the top step as they look up to the score. And right away, the air was called. And Willie Randolph will be the hitter. The ball seemed to carry more to Miller as Randolph stands in. The first pitch is strike, and the count is 0-1. Miller made the dive. The ball looked like it came up and hit him on the heel. Brian again ready. He sets an next pitch a curveball. That's in and over. The count is 0-2. On deck, Bucky Dent. 
Spencer at second. He's the second Yankee to get to second base tonight. Bryant's two strike pitch foul, and that got a piece of downing, staggered him. Philadelphia has defeated the Dodgers three to two. Knowles the winner, Sutcliffe the loser, McGraw his 11th save of the year. The Dodgers scoring their two runs in the ninth inning, falling a run short. Three runs, six hits, no errors for the Phillies. Two runs, ten hits, no errors for the Dodgers. Ryan ready to go to the stretch. Here's a two-strike pitch. Got him swinging strike three. strikes out and that brings on Bucky Dent. Eight strikeouts for Ryan. Spencer still stands at second base. Dent tonight is over two. He has struck out. He has flied to right. Ryan has his sign. He sets. The pitch to Dent is just low on the outside part of the plate, and the count one and zero. Oh. One ball, no strikes. Lansford back at third. Anderson deep at short. Miller slightly in right center field. The next pitch to Dent is a strike over the outside corner. One and one the count. Grit just step or so to his left. Ryan to the stretch, and here's a 1 1 pitch high. Ryan's next pitch to Dan, a check swing, and they call it a ball, and the count goes to three and one. We get a correction on the attendance tonight. It's 41,805. So that does not move to within the top five crowds here at Anaheim Stadium. Ryan ready. Here's a 3 1 pitch, high ball four. Fifth walk of the night. Cap off. He comes down the mound. Downing out. Rests the mask on top of his helmet. As the two stroll back to the mound. And now they have their say. Ryan tugs the cap down. Mask is pulled down by Downing. He comes back behind the plate. And we go to the top of the order in Bobby Mercer. Mercer is 0 for 3 tonight. He's flying to right. He's struck out and he's flying to left. And now all of a sudden the Yankees without a hit tonight have put the tying run at home plate in the name of Bobby Mercer. Spencer at second base. Dent at first. Ryan to the belt. The pitch to Mercer is taken low and the count one and oh. On deck the catcher Thurman Munson. Time called and Larry Sherry the pitching coach is going to the mound. And it might be right here that Larry just to watch give Nolan a little bit of a breather. Downing out. Brian cap tilted back. Wiping the perspiration away. Downing out. Listening to what Sherry has to say. Now Larry has had his say. The time has been taken. And he goes back to the dugout. Downing back behind the plate. Ryan still strolling around the mound. Now takes the cap. Pulls it down. Field straight away for Bobby Mercer. The outfield the same. Ryan to the stretch. The pitch to Mercer. A bouncer hit to Aikens. He has it. He'll go to the bag. He will do it himself. And the Yankees are retired in the eighth. No runs. No hits. One air. They leave two. If you're looking to the Yankee ninth, they will go to the men who have written many a script. Munson, Nettles, and Jackson. But through seven and one half, it's the Angels three, the Yankees nothing. Before we leave the subject and go to the bottom of the eighth inning, let's go back to Jim Spencer and Spencer's shot out into center field with Rick Miller coming after a sinking liner and reaching for it. The ball sinking right here and Miller 
Down, 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 and did not come up with it. It was called an error by the official score. And so the no hitter for Ryan is still alive as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. For Bobby Gritch, Jimmy Anderson, and Rick Miller. The pitch of Luis Tian. He is ball one outside. Well, the Cardinals with Silvio Martinez shut out Houston one to nothing. Houston's seventh straight loss. Third baseman Nettles has it and throws out Bobby Gritch, running gingerly with a sore hamstring. Shortstop Jim Anderson. Jimmy Anderson has knocked in a run. He's 0 for 2. Sacrifice fly his last time up. Garrett T. Aunt rather deep to right center field. Wiggles in the box, shortens up a bit, and that gets Nettles moving at third base. He was a call strike. Nolan Ryan back in the dugout. Three outs needed for his fifth no hitter. Strike two, call, scores, American League. Mike Marshall's 18th save for Dave Goats tonight as the Twins won. The two strike pitch to Anderson. Punch to the right side. Drifting foul. Reggie will throw it out. The home half of the inning is just sort of a moment of toleration, relaxation, the way things have developed tonight. That's right. They're all waiting for Ryan now with a chance to make. Right oh. through Nettles. Second game struggling. And Chicago has jumped on Cincinnati. The Cubs are playing very well. Look at the Mets. And the Dodgers, Phillies. Phillies beat them 3 2. Phillies are going to be right there in September, I think. And Houston losing again, of course. I mentioned that. Nicky Knowles got the win tonight, beat Sutcliffe, and McGraw got his 11th save for Philadelphia. Ball one to Rick Miller. Second and holds as Mercer comes back with it. Yankee bullpen is busy again. Lansford, the batter. Davis is up throwing this time. Ron Davis. And only he. Billy Martin on his way to the mound. Time call. And so we will have to wait a little longer. See whether or not Nolan Ryan takes another step in baseball history. Louis Tiot, who has thrown 148 pitches. Billy Martin has gone to the mound. He will stay there until Jim Evans comes out and says, let's get on with it. Billy has shown at this point no inclination to take Louis back with him, and he won't. on anybody's mind of course is Nolan Ryan will he make baseball history get a fifth no hit career performance three men to get what a pity that this brilliant and extraordinary performer should have a tainted situation yeah the three guys he faces aren't easy Munson Nettles and the third out if he comes would be Reggie Jackson Start thinking about that. Popped him up. 
Lansford shoots it up back of the plate. Munson comes back and makes the catch for the second out. So there is now Dan Ford, and then there are Munson and Nettles and Jackson to be gotten. It no longer is in the mind, I think, of most people here. All 41,805 and a few freeloaders like us as to whether or not uh, the Angels win the game. The consuming attention will go to the pitchers now. But now Tiant is trying to get the Angels out without further damage here in the bottom of the eighth inning and Ford looks and takes high ball one. Picture of Nolan Rock. Blocked by Munson. Two balls and no strikes. Good play. Don Baylor is on deck. Two out. Two on. Angels, three nothing. On 11 hits. Side corner at the letters to make it three and one. Well, this is one ball game. Nobody left early. In the twilight on July 13. Ford swings hard, misses three and two. Go Ford hits it down the right field line. It's a fair ball going to the corner. Both will score, and it's five nothing California. So Martin comes out. Tion will lead. No suspense left in the game in terms of who will win or lose, but tremendous suspense in terms of whether or not Nolan Ryan will get his fifth no-hit career victory. We'll be right back. T-shirt night, a reminder, that is the... He wins, no losses. He didn't even start the season with them. Ron Davis has come on in relief of Luis Tiot. His record, his numbers, we've spoken of him. He has been a bellwether for the New York pitching corps in the absence of Gossage. He will pitch now to Don Baylor as the Angels have taken the lead 5 nothing, two runs scoring here in the bottom of the eighth inning with Dan Ford at third base advancing over to third base as a result of Reggie being unable to dig the ball out of the canvas over in the corner the first pitch to Baylor is low for ball one 
Davis came up from Columbus April 22nd, was optioned out on May 3rd, came back May 28th, and boy, has he been important. Outside corner, call strike. Originally the number three selection by the Chicago Cubs in the free agent draft January 76, traded from the Cubs for Kenny Holson. Low curve is punched to center field. Mercer coming, can't get it, drops in. Well, a base hit and forward. Comes trotting across home plate with run number six. With Baylor at first base, two out, three runs in. Willie Akins comes to the plate. Ryan is simmering in the dugout. Confident, I'm sure, that he has his 12th win in hand. That, to coin an old time worn phrase, ain't the point. There's another base hit up the middle as Akins drills it. And so young Ron Davis is greeted by back-to-back -back singles for the California Angels. And Brian Downing now, who is the American League's leading hitter, will be coming to the plate. And there is the man of the hour. California Angels giving the nation a good evidence tonight of why they're presently in first place in the American League West. This club can hit. And when Ryan's in there and that kid marked clear, they're equipped to go against anybody. And remember, they've been staying up there despite the absence of baseball's greatest hitter, Carew, who'll be back within a week. Downing looks at a breaking pitch for a call strike. This is an impressive baseball team. Punch to the right side and flag by Chambliss for out number three. So the California Angels tack on three more runs after eight complete innings, lead six nothing. Back with the word, I mean the real word after this word from our local station. Sunday, win or lose. Out of 41,805, a sellout crowd here tonight. We understand tomorrow now is a sellout as is Sunday. Now the Yankees, who can pack them in. Well, I think the essential point is this. We had a local Pittsburgh writer call a ball ahead against Bruce Keese. He lashed out against the right. McCann clapping starting right off of the bat. Munson, Nettles, and Jackson to face Ryan in history. Ryan waiting for Munson to get ready. Rocks into motion. First pitch is outside for ball one. One ball and no strikes again. The Angels have broken it open. They lead it six to nothing. Ryan has his side, and here's the 1 0 -oh pitch outside, and that's ball two. Two balls and no strikes again. the 2 old -oh pitch to Munson. A bouncer hits Anderson. He charges. He boots the ball. He throws in it. Oh, get it. That will be an air. No question about that. But I don't think the press should be saddled with this kind of situation. Anderson a little indecisive as to how to play it, to back up on it or come in and short hop it. He came in and tried to short hop it, and he had no chance on Munson. And so Nettles now comes to the plate with Jackson to the on deck circle. Ryan needs three outs. Three outs. He had a chance. Right there, if Anderson plays it a little cleaner, it was a difficult play for young Jimmy. And the pitch misses for ball one.
concentration at this stage of a contest becomes so fragile. Popped up foul back out of play. It's one and one to Nettles. Three to go. Foul back here, and it's one and two. The infielders for California, fidgeting, moving around, smoothing the ground, taking off the glove, wiping the hands. They do not want to make a mistake. Nettles pops it up. Brian Downing, the catcher. One out. Two to go. Crowd on its feet as one. There's your picture. The Blues, of course, are for Reggie Jackson. Munson at first, one out. Reggie Jackson up, 0 for 3 tonight. Two men away from baseball history. Nolan Ryan. Base hit, center field. Munson goes to third. So it becomes academic. by the thousand paying tribute. But there's the man that spoiled it. Reggie hit it solid right up the middle. Chris Shams with two out. Takes low. Ball one. Ryan will be 12 and 6 on the season and headed for the All Star game. Ball is punch foul on the left side out of play. We'll try to take the time to talk with Nolan briefly when the game is done. It was exciting <laughs> going into that ninth inning with one up. Shambliss. At the count of one and two. That call strike. No 
Nolan Ryan right now with opportunity if he gets Chris pitches low he will have his seventh one hitter in his career. <laughs> Seven one hitters, four no hitters, just extraordinary. Two two to Shemps. Chris swings and misses, strikes out. The game is over. Nolan Ryan wins his 12th game of the season, but the no hitter is spoiled in the top of the ninth inning by Reggie Jackson as he hits a solid single up the middle. And the crowd standing and cheering, and we'll have a conversation with Nolan Ryan. In just a moment, as the Angels win the game 6 1, back after this message and the word from our local station. Nolan Ryan, I know you got to be terribly disappointed, Nolan, losing the no hitter in the ninth inning, but another outstanding effort here. The base hit by Reggie Jackson stopped it two outs away from number five. Well, thank you, Bob. It was. Uh, Ball back up the middle that I, I had a play on, and I just missed the ball. Uh, I wasn't ready for him hitting the ball back up the middle, and uh, it was a double play ball if I catch the ball. So I had the opportunity to throw it, and I didn't. What about the ball that Spencer hit that eluded Miller in center field? Well, as far as whether that was a hit or not, I don't know. I'm not in a position to tell whether he got his glove on the ball cleanly or not. Uh, it was an awful tough play. I know that. Uh, the play itself and the reaction uh, from the fans and the uh, Yankee dugout, it broke my concentration. And after that, I really wasn't able to, to uh, regain it like I had it uh, earlier in the game. And uh, so that was a big play for us. Uh, I made a pitch on Spencer that uh, I'd uh, previously had planned to go away with him. And uh, Brian and I decided we were ahead of him in the count that we'd come in on him and, and, and try to get him to chase a bad pitch. We got the ball up, but we didn't get in the spot we wanted. And uh, he hit the ball back to the middle. The game on Monday night, Nolan, when you shut out the Boston Red Sox, you threw 140 pitches. I was wondering how that affected you tonight. Well, I felt good up until after the, uh, the play in the eighth, and uh, then I felt a little uh, drained. I don't know if it was psychological or, or physical, but uh, uh, I didn't feel as sharp after that play, and uh, I just I didn't have that kind of stuff in the ninth inning. I was hoping I'd be able to spot the ball and uh, maybe get a double play ball out of Reggie, and he gave it to us, but I didn't make the play. Well, a great effort, Nolan. Thanks again. It was a super job tonight. Number 12 for Nolan Ryan. Now let's go back upstairs to Keith Jackson. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Nolan Ryan now 12 and 6. Tiant the loser. He's now 6 and 4. The final score, California 6. The New York Yankees 1. Join us tomorrow for a full day of sports action. Forest Hills men. KCLA. I love he can fly, but his lack of rhythm might get him in the end. And that's hard to say. I don't know many black men ain't got rhythm. <laughs> it's easy for jumping jack. It's easy for him. Let's go. Harvey Kane house. Let's go. Gatorade first. <laughs> Start trying. Oh, he said, but what? Look at the replay. This kid, Jack, is, man, this, this is what you call electricity. Take a look at the bar view. Ooh, kind of close. But no more. Hey, Scott Walker, you got to step up to the plate now. These people came to see you. We got Scott Walker, 50 inches. The Gatorade Bird competition, 50 inches. Let's go, Scott Walker. Walker. Hey, Spud. Watch where you jump on the front. Look, the dot. Wow. Let's take a look at the top view. The bar keeps going higher and higher. Hey, who's got to stick us up in New York City? We'll see. We'll be back with more Gatorade Burke. Tonight at 8, see what unfolds as the World Series of Poker main event continues from Las Vegas. Woo! Then at 10, it's the season finale of Bound for Glory. 
on ESPN2 tonight at 7.30. Southern Miss battles Conference USA rival Marshall. At 10.30, NBA Nation brings you highlights from around the league. It's all on tonight. And for all the latest all the time, turn to ESPN News. I told her I was a general. And she believed it. <laughs> He's so full of it, Paige. What the? Jimmy, help Paige. Doyle, flank that position. Covering fire. It's my job to lead these men. None of them are going to die under my command. Brothers in Arms, Earned in Blood, rated M for Mature. Travelocity presents The Roaming Gnome, Denouncer of Travel Myths. Our first myth, it's hard work to find the best airfare. Not true of Travelocity. Just search once, and if there's a lower fare at a different airport or on a different day, they'll show you. Myth number two, American appliances don't work in Europe. Oh, grow up. Ah! Am I going to die? More ways to find the lowest fare. Book with Travelocity and you'll never roam alone. Yeah, I've got Vonage. It's great. I get my voicemail messages forwarded to my email, call waiting, three-way calling. None of that stuff cost me extra. Plus, I could use the phone I already had and keep my old number. Not bad for $24.99 a month. Hey, Don. We're not out to change the world, just the way you talk to it. Sign up now and get your first month free. Call 1-888-258-4VON. High speed.